the supernatural economy of the Lord, it takes a person into the glory of his presence. His economy is his glory. It's a part of who he is. You know, we were studying where it say in Psalms that um, he increased them greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. And remember what I was teaching you days ago that uh, whenever you see greatness, you're dealing with the provisional aspect of a person. If somebody is great, that means that it provides something that's unusual. Like it's, it's, it's set apart. It's a sanctified, provisional path that they bring to the table. Like you, you can distinguish them about how, uh, by what they provide. God's provisional department of him is his greatness. Like nobody can compare it to what God provides. The children of Israel has manna from heaven. And then we see the, the Elijah realm where he's saying, I hear the sound of the abundance of the rain. And the rain is the the land is going through a famine, and here comes the abundance of rain supernaturally. Not only Elijah, but then Elisha experienced the abundance providing dimension dispensation of God, and they brought it forth to the people, and they saw it. So the Lord, His will is to get everybody into His system and off the Babylonian system. Because there's a lot of uncertainty and wickedness in the Babylonian system. People will wrong you when they're ready. They'll mistreat you. They'll do you dirty. The kingdom system is give and receive. Sow and reap. Your reaping department with God makes your joy full. You don't want to abort what God will have you reaping the harvest by listening to Satan to get it illegally. The harvest is carrying stuff that Satan will tempt you to trespass against God to indulge in. The harvest has sex in it. It's different from illegal sex, which is fornication. The harvest has pleasure in it. Allow the Lord of the harvest to give you the things properly rather than you taking a forbidden way that will jeopardize your eternal life. When you receive a true sowing anointing, you'll recognize that sowing it not only you taking your provision and you honoring God, but in the sowing anointing, the Holy Spirit is able to teach you that your sowing is dealing with your eternal life as well. Because you know how um, Apostle Paul was teaching in Galatians that if you sow to the Spirit, you're of the Spirit, reap everlasting life. So even eternal life with Jesus is grabbed in by you through sowing. The sowing anointing is how you receive eternal life. You, you walk into the new Jerusalem. Your sowing today has the new Jerusalem in it. The new heaven and new earth is in your sowing today. Think about that. 2,000 years from now, all that you will achieve, enjoy, and all the blissfulness that you will encounter is connected to the seeds that you sow in today. When you receive a true sowing anointing, it births a revelatory understanding of holiness. Be ye holy as I'm holy, mean that you be just like God and you're unwilling to tamper with anything that will take away your godliness. You'll keep yourself in the image of God all the time, 24-7, never wavering. The sowing anointed, the true sowing anointed will reveal to you that every seed I'm sowing into the Holy Spirit is keeping me from being defeated by spirits that hate me. Say, have you ever taken the time to really think about that all of your temptations are spirits looking for a reason to laugh at you? 
Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever taken the time to really think about it that my temptations are spirits that don't like me looking for a chance to laugh at me or embarrass me or, or, or mock me? Saints, temptation carries a spirit of divination. You take a note, write that down. Temptation carries a spirit of divination. The spirit of divination is in temptation because in temptation, uh, remember the spirit of divination was in that girl where she was mocking Apostle Paul. So she was mocking the apostolic anointing, which is an anointing of dominion and friendship with God. And it's firstly. So, so the apostolic anointing is first above the prophetic. Firstly, the apostle. Secondarily, the prophet. So if you really want to think about this in a divine revelatory manner, you'll see that the spirit of divination come to mock the dominion of God, the apostolic grace of God, and it comes to mock the uh, authority, the ability to rule and reign with Christ in this life. All of your temptation is carrying the spirit of divination. Demons want to mock God through you and then mock you as you're disconnected from God. So they want to use you to mock God, but then they want to laugh at you because they know that you don't have God's divine backing while you're listening to them. Hallelujah. The seed is firstly the word of God. Without the word of God, you can never truly sow. You got to have the word of God as your investment. It, it has to be invested in you so that your heart could become honorable towards God. And so you got to respect the first element of seed sowing. You got to let God sow his word into you. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, how could a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed according to the word? And so when you take heed according to the word, it cleanses you. All right. You see what I'm saying? Uh, when we when we deal with this aspect of the sowing anointing, there are degrees of sowing. There are degrees of sowing that break generational lust off of you. It's going to be very important because sin will take you out of sowing or sowing will take you out of sin. At one point, sin's job is to eradicate the light so much, dim the light so much that you don't even have energy to sow into God. Are you hearing me? This, the sowing anointing will take you out of iniquity or iniquity will take you out of the sowing anointing. Remember, they're both battling for your heart. So whatever is able to get a foothold on the heart will rule the heart. You ever thought about that? I want you to really think about that What I just said. Sin will take you out of the sowing anointing or sowing anointing will take you out of sin because both of them, are, they are originated in the heart. You, you purpose in your heart to give. Well, you purpose in your heart to sin. Both of them have purposes. So one purpose have the power to eradicate the other purpose. So saints, if you look at Cain, Cain couldn't so properly because sin had occupied his heart so strong. So he couldn't get the seed out because the seed was coming out of the same heart that had already been immersed in sin. That same heart couldn't purpose in it. He couldn't purpose in his heart to give because that heart was already giving itself over to evil. So the, the, the sin took Cain out of sowing. The sowing took Abel out of sin. Did you hear what I just said? Did, did you see that? The, the, the sin took Cain out of sowing, but the sowing took Abel out of sin. 
And, and, and then if we want to look at this, look, Cain is angry at Abel. Because Abel is not struggling with what he's struggling with. Abel's life doesn't look like his. But it's because Abel let the sow and anointing take over his heart. When you let the sow and anointing take over your heart, you start living an eternal life now while you're on earth. Did you know that abundant life is really the first stages of eternal life? The reason why it's called eternal life, because the abundance will never stop now. Because you graduated from the tests of this life. So that's what eternal life is. I, I, I get to live in abundance forever. That's what eternal life is. So when, when, when Jesus said, I come to give you life, that means you get saved. And life, that means the continuation of that salvation, more abundantly. Now you're able to bring other people into salvation because you got abundant life. Now the other aspect of that, I come to give you life, that's the financial restoration. And life, that's the perpetual flow of that uh, 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 prosperity grace, that, that, that provisional aspect of God. And he said more abundantly, now you see the abundance attached to the finances. And then we could go down the line with health. I come to give you life, that's bodily health. And life, that's the continuation of that health, take you to the depths of what health looks like. God start teaching you how to drink water, work out your body, exercise, sleep correctly, get the proper amount of sleep in the night. And now life more abundantly, more abundantly. Now we see in the overflow of that health anointing where you're able to teach others about health. You're able to impart grace to their health situation and show them where they're going wrong. You got to understand these layers of the depths of God. If you just humble yourself, he takes people that are just seeming normal and he makes you supernatural. The so and anointing will take people that look ordinary and make you rich, make you wealthy, make you free, make you brilliant. Saints, there's a dimension where people, they are desiring to come out of evil. And then there's a dimension where you hate evil. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 and on said the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. See, when you hate evil, you're not even struggling to come out of evil no more. You mad. You mad at the evil. You mad at it. You get mad at the fact that Satan got the nerve to try you. You got the nerve to try me, think that I'm going I'm to listen to you and not listen to my Jesus after Jesus done died on the cross for me, shed his blood, done paid the price for me to be free and liberated. You think I'm going to sit here and act like I ain't got the power to stop doing something or stop going somewhere or stop talking to someone or stop looking at something. I got the power. I choose what I watch. I choose what I listen to. I choose how I think. I rule myself. The Bible says in Proverbs that he that has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. He that does not have rule over his spirit. You're supposed to rule your spirit. The sowing anointing teaches you how to rule your spirit, how to rule your finances, how to rule the events that come towards you. Saints, when you sow in, God will have people be nice to you. Your car might break down. God will have the mechanics switch prices for you. Many of you all in JHM have told me of your story. Um, many of you all in JHM have told me your story. You've told me of the miracles that you have experienced. You told me of the miracles that you have experienced. Um, I got a, uh, from, um, I want to say your name correct. Cause you, you be changing your name, girl. <laughs> but she go by Sabella. She told, she told me she been with me for years now. And she be sewing. She just sold, and she got 
a $70,000 debt wiped out in her student loan. $70,000. Think about it. $70,000. Ah. Now she sold to me all the time. She been with me for years. Sewing. She had a $70,000 debt wiped out. Debt cancellation is in sowing and honoring God because you're showing the Lord, I put my trust in you concerning financial matters. I need you. Saints, what I love about sowing is you, you humble yourself before God and tell him, Lord, I, I want to honor you. I want to do right by you. Help me out. Help me out. Show me, show me how to deny me. Show me how to remain unselfish. And you got to let the sowing anointing continue because you can stop it. What, what I'm telling you is that you could get to the zone where you put money on the altar and you say, I'm going to bless my man of God. But then you stop. After you put the money on the altar, then you stop. And then you start sowing back into the flesh. You got to get out of that curse. That's a curse. You got to let the mantle, the spirit of your man of God, come on you, the spirit of the prophet. You got to let that prophetic and prosperous spirit take over you where you start having that same mentality so that you can continue in the sown anointing. Don't sow and stop. You can quench the sown anointing when it starts. The Holy Ghost got you in the sown anointing and then now you quench it. Let it keep on going until it bring you out of generational lust, generational witchcraft, generational fear, generational anxiety attacks, generational yokes and addictions and afflictions and diseases and sicknesses and pains. Let the sowing anointing, let your honor towards God open up portals for God to reach the things that disturb you in this life and bring justice, bring love, bring peace. What if Abram didn't sow? What was going to happen to him? Was God going to make him the father of many nations? No. If Abram didn't sow, God was not going to make him the father of many nations. God said, I'm going to make you a father over a large group of people, innumerable amounts of people, because I could trust your spirit for them to piggyback off of. I know that if they imitate you, they will live holy. If they imitate you, they will live righteous. If they imitate you, they will live faithful. They'll live bold. They'll live courageous. They'll live continuous. They'll live in the overflow of provision. They'll live wealthy. They'll live rich. They'll live accountable. They'll live successful. They'll live humble. They'll live meek. They'll live teachable. They'll live on fire. Abram was on fire for God. If you look at his whole totality of his life, Abram never backslide. Never did. He never did one time. Or oh, what about when he said that that was his sister? God gave him millions of dollars after he did it. That don't sound like no backsliding to me. After he did that, he had servants and people serving him. Imagine God pitting people underneath to serve you and you a liar. You think God going to pit and trust you so that you can pit a spirit of lies on them? Abram was moving in a raw anointing. God said in, in the Gospels, I say you as a sheep and amongst wolves. Be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. That was the wisdom of a serpent moving through Abram. Abram was on fire for the Lord. And the Lord made him rich and he kept on sowing. And God made him richer and he kept on sowing. The same thing with Solomon. He was on fire for the Lord. They kept on building altars. After Solomon had done sold all these thousands of offerings, he said, come on, let's build another altar. Let's keep on sowing. He was a sowing fanatic. These people in the word, they were so intentional about sowing into their God. They didn't want to leave no entry for the demonic powers to re-enter them and reclaim them and reuse them and re-deceive them. They didn't want to leave nothing open in their heart. They was guarding their heart through the honor anointing. The honor anointing lets you guard your heart. Keep you invested in God. Keep you on fire for God. Keep you committed to God. Keep you submitted to God. It keeps you a peacemaker. When you're honoring God, you recognize how to stay in peace, how to be mature, how to be wise, how to be in self-control, how to have temperance. 
Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 13, look what it says right here. Let's go to verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure that's hid in a field. The which when a man has found it, he hideth. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he has and buyeth that field. Saints, when we hear the word buy, we're dealing with the financial transaction. This man is so convinced about the kingdom of heaven that he's willing to take his money and sow into it. Saints, ain't no trickery here. This in your Bible. Read it for yourself. Jesus said that the man goes and buys the field. Jesus is telling you that this man, he's so persuaded about the kingdom system that now the persuasion has circulated to his finances. And now his finances is led by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is telling him how to sow into the kingdom. He buys so you can buy the kingdom. You could buy God's kingdom. You say, prophet, no, 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 you can't buy no kingdom. What is that, Proverbs 17, 17, that say, buy the truth and sell it not, or Proverbs 27, 20? What is it? Buy the truth? What is that? Proverbs 23, 23 says, buy the truth. Well, well John 14 tells us that the truth is Jesus. So how do you buy Jesus? Jesus is on sale. You buy the truth through honor. You invest yourself into what you're hearing. You, you honor, you celebrate what you're learning. You take from your provision and you say, I'm going to place it here because I believe in this word. That's why now you know why when you sow into the word, you reap that word. Like say somebody like, you know, I'm going to sow into this psalm. Well, well you, that psalm is what you're going to read. Saints, I, I used to sow into Psalm 112 because I heard Dr. Mike Murdoch tell me that he did that. So years ago, I started doing that. That was like 2014. Saints, I got so much stuff. I ain't got enough to, room to receive. The other, day I was, the other day I was telling the Lord, I said, Lord, Father, thank you. I don't have room enough to receive. I say, you're, you're, you're my strength. You're my healer. You're my provider. You're my God. You're my overflow. You're my abundant life. Father, you are my riches. You are my wealth. You are my trophy. You are my boast. You are my eternal life. You are my eternal life. You are my joy. You're my peace. Uh, you're my more than enough. You're my open heavens. You're my favor with God and with men. You're my, I have more than enough. I don't have room enough to receive everything that I have. I don't have room enough to receive everything I have. Saints, God going to bless you to the degree where you're going to, you, the only time you're going to get confused is on what you're going to wear because you got so much clothes. See, see the confusion that you be dealing with, the confusion with decision. Now, God going to let you have fun confusion. Man, I got so much shoes. What shoes I'm put on today? Saints, look at the shoes I got on today, man. I'm going to show you this, man. I'm going to show you this. Look at the shoes I got on today. And these boys clean, boy. Look at it. Look at the shoes I got on today. These shoes I'm wearing right here on this live, man. You see, and I take care of my stuff. See, I can lick the bottom of my shoe even though I wear it because it's clean. Even when I go, it's clean. You see what I'm saying? Look, look, this is what this, this is what my shoes. See, some of y'all, you can't even touch the bottom of your shoe. I don't even walk in dirty places. <laughs> look, look at the bottom of my shoe. I don't even. These are some size 11 New Jerusalems. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You get to the zone. My gosh. Somebody bought me these. Man, I got so much shoes. This, 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 man. Ha! Huh. Saints, I got so much stuff. 
Ain't got room enough to receive. I ain't got room. Now, saints, I'm a giver. And everything I give come back to me in overflow. I give. I share. I've been sharing for, for years. Nothing selfish about me. Today, I'm still sowing every single day of my life. Still sowing. Every day, I sow at least over $100 every day. Well, you might sit there and be like, well, why you don't give me some? See, you don't understand all your life you've been getting some. But see, the difference between me and you, I'm going to listen to the Holy Ghost and flip what I got. I ain't going to put my trust in what I got. I'm going to keep on sowing. I'm, I'm not living... I'm not living to, 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 to pick confidence in money. I'm living to show forth the glory of God to you so that you can understand. Say, I would take my pants off, but I'm... <laughs> you don't understand what I mean by that. They ain't come out right. I, I meant to show you what type of pants I got. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to say. I ain't... <laughs> I ain't... <laughs> you say, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to talk about that. I'm trying to talk about the, the 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 type of pants that are gone. See, it ain't come out correct. See, some of y'all turn your ear, it ain't come out correct in year. You see what I'm saying? Because it's about 1159, and when you get 1159, some stuff come out that, you know, you, you, it, it come out wrong because cause, cause, cause you've been strong for so long. But see, that didn't come out right either. But understand what I'm trying to say is what I'm saying going to be understood. You see what I'm saying? See? See, that ain't, that ain't. Matthew chapter 13. <laughs> Matthew chapter 13. Look what it says right here. He goeth and buys the field. So the, the, the kingdom of heaven is so real to him that he sows into it. He buys it. He's making financial transactions towards it. And he's reaping of that kingdom of heaven. Saints, when you reap of the kingdom of heaven, God will cause people to be nice to you. They'll like you. They'll enjoy you. And they'll want to bless you. The Lord of the harvest, he waits for someone to pull on his nature. And his nature is to be a caretaker. He loves taking care of you. He loves bringing a smile to your face. The Lord of the harvest wants to see you smiling from ear to ear all throughout the year. Many people have never became conscious of the financial covenant that the Lord has for them when they breathe their first breath in a baby's body. That the Lord already had money cometh on your itinerary. And I keep telling you, this comes from the story of Jesus. As a little baby, money cometh is already on his itinerary. People are already moving to sow into him. Before you ever start integrity, uh, in integrity sowing into God, God already will use people to put money in your hands. You know why? Because he given you something to sow. God gives you money to sow. So if you look at the course of your life, you been was making money even when you wasn't listening to God. And you might look at that and say, well, I ain't got to listen to God to make money then. What you don't understand, that was the mercy of God, the goodness of God coming towards you because he wanted you to repent because the kingdom of God was at hand in your life. But see, a lot of times you miss those moments. The devil got you focused on everything concerning yourself that you don't take the time for God to teach you his kingdom. And so you do what you want. You take that money, you blow it. Think about it. Ten years ago, the money that you was making, what happened? What became of that money? What became of the money that you made 15 years ago? Think about it. Some of the stuff that you bought, you don't even got it today. You never saw a portal for you to sacrificially give. Now, let me ask you a question. What if 15 years ago you knew what you knew today? 
Would you agree that you would be further off in finances today? Because you'll be reaping harvests. Yes. So let me ask you today. What you going to do today with the financial anointing and the finances that God is ministering to you today? Because if you could look back 15 years ago and say, what if I was listening to God? By 15 years, I probably would have been in houses and lands and prosperity. I probably would have had a Lamborghini. I probably would have had a lot of stuff because I would have been reaping up on harvests. Well, think about I have today. I can't change what I did 15 years ago. I can't change the dumb decision I did 20 years ago. Well, look at me today. I have time today. How about I start sowing and I pave the way for what I should have had from 15 years ago. Now I could build that up today. In the same way, if I look at five years ago, what if I listened to God and kept myself a father of the Lord? Wouldn't he be able to give me pleasure? Wouldn't he be able to give me an increase? Why? Because my life is pure. I'm following his ways. Wouldn't he be able to overtake me with blessing? Well, think about that today. What if today you make yourself pure before God, you make yourself ready, you make yourself teachable, attentive, you're sowing. What if the harvest come in and you start reaping all those things that if you look back 15 years ago, you said, what if I would have been listening to God like I or know what I know today and following that, that regimen? What if? Abram was unwilling to miss his moment. Sarah was unwilling to miss her moment. You notice Sarah never stops Abram when he's going to go sow the seed. She had a help me sow an anointing. Wow. Sarah was in agreement with the raw sowing spree that Abram was going on. She never hinders him to go take Isaac and offer him up. She lets him take her. Sarai was in agreement with the sowing anointed. Think about that. The seed was not being hindered by Abram, the husband, or Sarai, the wife. They both was in oneness to sow their way out. And saints, remember the ram in the bush is not in them choosing to reject the sown anointing. It's in the path that the sown anointing going to bring them. So I want you to hear this. All of your rams in the bush, all of your supernatural provision is not in you saving your life from sowing into God. It's from you sowing into God instead of saving your life. The rams in the bush was hidden in Abram deciding to sow and Sarai letting him sow. And saints, I want you to understand this. You got to catch this. You got to become the Sarai and let the seed be sown. Let the Holy Ghost be your Abraham and let him take the seed from you. So that you could discover that there's rams in the bush. 